Welcome back to Mr. News Art Class. It's wonderful to see your smiling faces today. Today we're going to be painting our architectural designs and uh, we're going to be using the color wheel to determine which colors we're going to use. Let's go take a look at that. There are lots of different ways that artists use a color wheel to uh, make choices about what colors they put in their artwork. Today we're going to be thinking about unity or harmony so we're going to be using analogous colors. So here I am on Google just searching up some color wheels, uh, trying to figure out which one would work best for what we're doing today. This one will do. Let's go ahead and save that and carry it over into Photoshop. Now that we've got this color wheel here, let's see what we can learn about how artists put colors together. So complementary colors are what you want to use for contrast. But what if you want unity? Unity means your colors belong together. What if I used these colors? This photograph and this photograph and this photograph look harmonious because all the colors are close together on the color wheel, which gives them unity. Here's another example using harmonious colors of blue and green. Colors that are next door on the color wheel have a fancy name. They are called analogous. For example, if we started with red and we wanted to use analogous colors, we could go around the color wheel one or two spaces in either direction, but we definitely do not want to go all the way across. So if red is my base color, I could also use orange, violet, and colors in between like red-orange and red-violet. Or if blue is my starting color, I could use green, violet, and colors in between like blue-violet and blue-green. Or maybe I'm starting off with yellow. I could go this way on the color wheel to find some orange. I could go this way on the color wheel to find some green. I could use the colors in between like yellow green and yellow orange. So now that we've learned how to use analogous colors, I have green and then I've split across the color wheel next to it, uh, yellow on one side and blue on the other. And uh, of course, if I need to, I can mix yellow and green together to get a yellow green. I could mix blue and green together to get a blue green. And this will give me a nice analogous color scheme for my architectural design. Now I'm using tempera paint here. Something we need to be aware of with tempera paint is it's uh, already wet. So we don't need a wet brush. It's not like watercolors. Watercolors, you would need to use a wet brush. I do have a cup of water here for cleaning my brush because I don't want, uh, you know, if I want to use yellow and I already have blue on my brush, I got to have that cleaned off so that I don't, you know, mix it together. Um, but every time I clean my brush, I need to dry my brush on a paper towel before I use it. Uh, I want to use a dry brush with my temper paints. Now, I can use any one of these three colors just the way they are. So maybe I want to start with a yellow window. And next, maybe I want um, green grass. Now, I, I happen to luck out here with my color choices that green I can use for grass. You might be wondering, well, wait, what color am I going to use for my building? Am I going to make it red bricks? Am I going to make it gray like it's a metal building? Uh, or, a, a, you know, well, no, I'm going to stick with my analogous color scheme. So, no, I'm not going to be able to use a red brick because that's not in my analogous color scheme. And, well, gray... Gray is neutral. We're not using neutral colors here. We've got the black outlines, but other than that, we want this whole picture to be really colorful. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean my brush here and use the green for the grass. Notice I'm drying my brush before I grab that color. So here I've mixed up a little bit of a blue-green, and my thought was to use blue-green for the doors and yellow-green for the rest of the building, and maybe some blue-green again up in the rooftop. So this is now finished, but as you noticed, I made a bit of a mess on my table. One of the beautiful things about tempera paint is that even after it's dry, you can wipe it clean. So just here I just have a damp paper towel. I got it wet and then squeezed all the water out. Uh, so it's just got a little bit of water in it, and that is all it takes to get all that paint up. So in the end here, notice that I have not left any white. I've filled the entire page with color and I've only used analogous colors. I started with green and I had on one side yellow, on the other side blue, looking at the color wheel. And uh, I also mixed those to make yellow green and blue green as well. And because I used those analogous colors. This whole picture feels harmonious and like everything belongs together.